what is up youtubers it is war is here and we are back with another gimmick studio tutorial um yeah welcome back to episode four and uh today what i want to cover is a rather abstract topic but it's uh, incredibly useful for pretty much any game that you make and that is keyboard input now the thing is, with most keyboard input like tutorials that people make, uh, they'll just use the function like, oh, keyboard check pressed so-and-so, and the problem with that is it doesn't give you any control of why like, actually allowing the user to change the control input. And that's going to be the highlight of this tutorial, because what I want to cover is not only keyboard input, but actually keyboard remapping. And we can use this in uh, many other game projects, and it's sort of like a foundation for any project that you make. So um, it's really quite useful. And um, let's get into this. So from the previous tutorial, uh, I actually need to change this. This is a uh, episode three code, but we're we're on four now, uh, and that's because what I've actually done here is taken the the actual project file from episode 3 and we can use this as a basis for what we're going to do in this tutorial. So let's get into it. The first thing I actually did, um, obviously we have our initialize object but what I've also gone and done is put this in a folder now so it's got its own folder separated. I've also created a new folder called controllers and I haven't used controller objects yet in these tutorials but I will explain them. Um, so my controller objects, I prefix them con underscore, and that just like symbolifies that it's a controller object, and it's like, um, yeah, there there should be only one of them in existence. That's the thing I'm trying to put across. So the initialize object, let's just cover that first. Uh, the initialize object, when the create event runs for this object, it actually goes down and it creates all of the controller instances and the controller instances are actually persistent so what this does um, it allows me to store variables that are required throughout the game's runtime and doing it this method makes it really easy to control numerous things such as input uh, variables involving delta time uh, yeah, scoreboard values if you want to save them for the next time you start the game and stuff like that. It's like really useful. So, so what I'm doing here, I'm creating an instance of controller input at the very beginning of the game when it begins. And controller input, make sure you've got persistent as checked on the object because persistent will basically mean that when you switch rooms inside Game Maker, uh, at runtime, the object will not destroy itself. Uh, these objects will always exist no matter what room you're in. So you only need to create them once, that's the other thing. So just as a safety check, another thing I like to do with controller objects, um, I like to check if they exist first, and if they don't, um, then create them. So you could just do like in if instance exists. Uh, like so, and then the name of your object, so in this instance it would be controller input. Um, but yeah, that is really overkill, so... <laughs> anyway, back to the tutorial. So, back into this controller input object. The first thing we need to do is reassign those keyboard values that we had in the previous tutorial, uh, so that they're now created in the controller input object as opposed to the player object. So if we go back to this player's create event, I will modify this in this tutorial file, uh, but previously what we had here, we had like k up equals keyboard uh, check pressed, and then it was checking a certain key, and uh, essentially, yeah, detecting the net movement of both the x and the y. Now, I'm going to leave these values here, and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to make them global and the global ones can then be assessed in any object. If we go back to the controller input object and then the create event, uh, I'll enlarge this just a bit so you can see it a bit better, but we've got global there, so that's a statement in GameMaker to make a variable global. Uh, k up, k down, k left, and k right. 
Now, this makes these variables global and then they can be assessed in any object. So no matter what object needs to have an input, uh, we can always reference these variables and they'll never change throughout the game's runtime. Now, by default, you can just uh, comment like, well, separate them with commas so you can initialize multiple variables at once, uh, but these don't have an assigned value yet. So you can just do uh, k up equals zero, down zero, left zero, and right zero. Now, then, um, I also have some local variables that are only inside this one object. Uh, these are kr up. Now, the difference between these is that uh, the k up uh, is actually referenced by other objects in the game, but the kr up actually uh, controls which value uh, is assigned to that specific key. So by default, uh, I set this to or W. So when you press the W key down, uh, it will set um, yeah K up to one. That is. So um, and there's one more thing we need to do to this actually. So we need to also create a new key in this instance. We need to do K. Uh, remap uh, and that key is actually going to be used for uh, listening for another key input so we can remap the key so do k underscore remap equals zero and then that's another global variable now um, we also need two other uh, variables in fact three for that matter uh, we need to set a k r underscore remap value and then set that to vk underscore f12. Uh, I like to use like the f keys for functions. Um, yeah, when like they're not really used by the game, but they're just used for various like uh, manipulation uh, of the game. And like, say for example, if you have a debug screen, typically you'd use like f3 or something for like that. Um, so for this instance, we're going to be using f12 to remap the keys. But in a later tutorial, I actually want to make GUIs um, and buttons, and I'm going to incorporate them into this by basically allowing you to select a button for a specific key function, and then listen for a key input, and then remap that specific key, instead of pressing the key that you want to change, and then pressing F12 to listen for a new keyboard input, and then a new keyboard press for registering that previous key that like you designed. Um, so it's a it's quite um yeah well it works but I wouldn't like to use this in a publishable game. So but we will be changing that later down the line. Anyway, um, we need a key reassign value, and we're going to set that to false. And we also need a k uh, map value, and then set that to zero. So the k reassign is going to be acting as a toggle, and when it's set to true, the game is going to be listening for a new key input. Uh, the k map value is actually going to hold the previous keyboard function that we had pressed down, and then it's going to compare this k map value to the latest keyboard press. And if they match, um, it will reassign it, essentially. So, yeah, that's it for the create event. Now we can switch over to the step event. Uh, oh, oh, one, yeah, one other thing. I have also done a draw GUI event, and I'm drawing text as a string um, of the key reassign value, so we can actually check when this key's been pressed down and the toggle is working. So um, we'll get that working in a bit, though. So, yeah, over to the step event. So, the step event, here we go. We need to check if a player wants to remap the last key pressed. So, uh, k underscore remap equals keyboard check release. And then we want the kr underscore remap value, which is vkf12. Then, uh, we want to check if that has been toggled. So that will return one or zero depending on if it's pressed or released. 
Well, sorry, no, if it's released or just unpressed, that is. So, if k remap, and then we want to toggle that reassignment variable, so k reassign equals true, and then, uh, I'm trying to think now, yeah, we actually want to listen for a new key that is going to be pressed to reassign the old key. So, if keyboard, oh, if I can spell, check release, and then VK any key. So that's going to listen for any keyboard key on the keyboard, essentially, and then remap it to that new value. Close that brace, and then we want another check. Uh, we want if keyboard underscore last key. So that's a value that's contained in GameMaker by default. It holds the last key that was pressed on the keyboard. Uh, does not equal kr remap. And yeah, what that's going to do, that's basically checking if we press a keyboard key down and it does not equal uh, vkf12 because we don't want to allow the player to reassign the F12 key which is used for the remapping. We, we don't want to do that, that's a bad idea. <laughs> um, and then if it doesn't, then we can set the K map value to hold the key uh, as keyboard last key. Like so. So that's essentially the, yeah, the initial function that's been pressed by the player will be assigned to that keyboard last key. Uh, then, before we do the reassignment, I'm actually going to set the key binds up for input use, so we can actually test this in game then. Do kr underscore remap, and then that equals, uh, hang on a second, hmm, oh sorry, no, no we don't want to do that, we want to do k underscore up, and set it to keyboard check pressed and then kr up so that's the new value that is remappable then and then we're reassigning that to the k up so that's applied to every object in the game that way uh, we don't want to allow the player to uh, check the remap value that's a bit pointless <laughs> so down and then we want right and then we want left like so then we can just copy and paste them like so and because these are global values the the k underscore values uh we can basically address these in every object so if we test the game now the the input for the player object should work even though he has like no keyboard checks and in, involved in him so, oh, uh, actually, yeah, <laughs> it's only incrementing by one pixel. That's because we want to use keyboard check as opposed to keyboard check pressed. Uh, that only checks if you pressed it down, and then if it's held down, it doesn't return one. It only returns zero. Uh, yeah, so we've got this movement working again now. And also, if I press that F12 key, uh, it sets our remap value to one. So it's actually now going to listen for a keyboard input uh, and remap the last press key. So yeah, so close that and we can actually deal with the reassignment now. So we want to do if, uh, let me think about this, k reassign and uh, keyboard key. So that's essentially checking if the reassignment like value is true so if a key can be reassigned and we're checking like pressing the keyboard key down then we want to go into a switch statement now i've never used these before um i have used them i just like not used them in my tutorials switch statement is essentially a bit like a glorified if statement but you actually specify the parameters of a switch statement exactly as they are um yeah, like, the if statement, you can use it to check, like, variable ranges, but, um, 
you tend to use switches if you've got like, exact values and this is what we've got here it's just more optimized that's all um case and then kr underscore up uh curl one and then we want to do tab out kr underscore up equals keyboard underscore last key like so and then we want to do break with a semicolon one like that so and in the switch statement i've actually missed this out we want to do switch k map like so so this is actually gonna run through all the possible values that k map can be uh so which are k up k down uh k left and k right and if they equal them values we can reassign them so uh that needs to be down and then that needs to be down and that needs to be right that needs to be right and that needs to be left and that needs to be left all right then yeah so final thing we need to do once we've actually reassigned that value we want to set that k reassign value back to full so we're not listening for any more key presses and then we also want to set that k map value back to zero so that uh, it doesn't hold uh, any more key presses and uh i believe that is it so uh let's just double check that yeah looks good okay so run the game and we will hopefully be able to have a remappable key so so press WASMD, uh, I can move about, and press the D key, so I want to remap the D key, right? So press the D key, and then press the F12 key to listen for a new key to remap it to, and then let's just say press the G key, and then I've now remapped the uh, D key to the G key, so, uh, oh, actually, uh, that's a bit strange. Hmm. Seems to have uh, not broken out of this section here for some reason. <laughs> Let's try that again. So press F12, press G. Ah, right, so it's not actually... It's not actually setting that toggle back to false again. So... Uh, I, oh wait, that's why. It's because we're breaking out the loop here and we actually want to put that there like so. And hopefully that will fix the problem. That's because we're breaking out of the loop before it can actually uh, yeah, set that value back to false. I've just realised something. We can actually just get rid of that. Put it after the switch statement like so. And then that will fix our problem. Run again. Yeah, so um, press the D key, so I want to remap it. Press F12 to listen for a new key. Uh, press F. And I've just remapped it. So my controls are now W, A, S, and F as opposed to W, A, S, and D. And uh, yeah, I will actually record this on my phone so I can show you that it is functional. So if I currently press W, S and D you can see the player in the top right corner there. Uh, press the D key to move right on the keyboard and you notice know, it's moving right but if I press F12 like so by oh actually first press the D key so you can see that then press the F12 key and finally press the F key and you'll notice that I'm now pressing the F key and it's moving to the right just like we intended so uh yeah hope to see you all in the next one so in the next one i actually want to cover guis uh and adding buttons and main menus into the game um we're actually then going to use them buttons to allow the player to reassign specific keys from the menu as opposed to actually having to press the key re like listen for a new one and then like remap it uh in the system we've done here so 
But until the next one, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Hope you found it informative. And as always, subscribe, like the video, and adios.